Hello, hello, good evening and welcome. My name is Lou. I am your dessert obsessed baker here at Crumbs and Corkscrews. And welcome to what I think is quite a wet and chilly Wednesday evening here in the Coxworlds. Um, thank you very much, wherever you're joining me from. If you're joining me from Facebook, on YouTube, or on the replay, wherever you're joining, thank you so much. I truly appreciate you guys being here on a Wednesday evening or catching up. Um, if you are new to the channel, new to Crumbs and Court Squares, what's this all about? Well, Kitchen Live was born out of that time when we all stayed at home and we didn't go out very much. And it was my way of bringing all the desserts on the blog to life for you guys. Um, the beauty of all the things I do is they are delicious and they are easy. I say they're deliciously easy. So it doesn't matter if you're out there sort of winning Bake Off, getting a Hollywood handshake, you know, star baker, or if you're brand new to the kitchen, to desserts or to, to cooking, I can guarantee you'll find something where it's on the blog or any of the live streams that you're going to enjoy. And with that said, this evening, doo -doo -doo, we are doing an after eight Rocky Road. I put it to you guys last week. Let's do something with after eight. We narrowed it down to either a cheesecake or a Rocky Road. And you guys have voted for the Rocky Road. Uh, I'm so excited because I haven't made Rocky Road for ages and I love this. It is a little heavy on the old chocolate and all of that. It's good fun, but you only need a little bit for it to be good. I am going to do the cheesecake, uh, probably not on Kitchen Live. I'm making it for my family this weekend, so I will share that recipe with you when I've done that. But in the meantime, grab a coffee or a cup of tea, maybe you fancy a festive tipple, uh, get comfy. We're going to spend the next hour or so sort of creating an after eight rocky road. So let's just, oh, dear me, ping all these things. Good evening, John. <laughs> Good evening, everybody else out there in YouTube and Facebook land. Da -da. Uh, so where are we going then this evening? Well, as I said, we're making an after eight rocky road. This this, this, do do here is uh, on the blog. This is a gingerbread rocky road. Um, but this one is going to be an after eight rocky road. And I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that this is going to come out in a couple of layers. So you're going to get, I'm going to call this a triple decker rocky road. Rocky Road is, let's not look at the calories, because if we start looking at that, we're going to run a mile <laughs> from this. But we're going to be making quite a slab of Rocky Road this evening. It's going to serve about six to 20 slices. You might even get more slices out of it, um, because it's quite it's quite uh, decadent, let's say. But the beauty of the Rocky Road is it is really easy. It is no bake. We are not doing any faffing with baking or anything. We are going to melt some chocolate. Uh, but it's really easy to make. And this is, for me, an absolute... You can see the pile of ingredients that we've got going already here. This is a decadent blend of mint chocolate. Uh, we've got crunchy biscuits in there. We've got gooey marshmallows. We're all going to pile it all in. Um it is really quick to, to, to assemble this. And the, the beauty of any Rocky Road is I can give you a base and then you can put in it what you want. I mean, you don't have to make this with after eight. If mint error is more your thing, not yourself out and go that way. And fingers crossed with this being layered up with a triple layer, this one is going to impress. Cons wise, there's always something, isn't there? And the con with this is you've just got to let it set. You've got to let it chill out in the fridge, have a bit of chill time, and then it'll all be good for you slicing up. If you try and slice it beforehand, it'll just all disintegrate. <laughs> so that's your taste, your pros and your cons. Let's have a look at our ingredients. Now, there's no equipment on here. I will talk to you about the equipment, but We've got quite, I keep going the wrong way. <laughs> uh, we've got three layers here, as you can see. Fingers crossed, triple layer. Uh, our bottom layer then is going to be uh, dark chocolate based. Um, I'm using dark chocolate, nothing fancy. This is Aldi and this is Lidl. You're gonna want 300 grams of that. Um, 
And then to go with that, we're going to be adding a little butter into our chocolate mix. And that's going to give us that really glossy, lovely shine. It's also going to enrich that chocolate a little bit. Now, you'll see I've just said butter. And I always say use a salted or an unsalted or anything specific like that. With Rocky Road, if you want to go salted or unsalted, it's entirely up to you. You just want some butter in there. I'm using slightly salted today. Um, we're also going to add, as you'll see, into our top and bottom layer where we're using dark chocolate, we're going to add a little bit of golden syrup. Um, this is just a squeezy variety. Um, you can use the stuff in the can or store own uh, golden syrups. All of this can be really pared down if you're on a budget. If you can't get golden syrup, you can switch for something like a light corn syrup if you're in the US or Australia, um, but don't switch it for maple syrup. Maple syrup has too much of a taste that's going to taint your chocolate and things like that. So um, if you can't get golden syrup or a, a corn syrup, then leave that out. All it does is just cuts through uh, the bitterness of the dark chocolate a little. I've got straps that are really annoying me today, sorry. Uh, so you'll want that as well. In our bottom layer, then, we're going to add our biscuits. Now, normally with a rocky road, we throw it all in together, mix it all up in a bowl and put it in a, in a tin. But with this one, I'm sort of layering it up a bit differently. So in our bottom layer, we're going for biscuits. Now, I've got... I haven't seen a penguin biscuit. If you're in the UK, a penguin biscuit is synonymous with childhood for me. Uh, pick up a penguin. <laughs> and I found they did mint ones. And these were on offer when I did the shopping this week. So I'm using mint penguin biscuits in my bottom layer. You can use, I don't know if everybody remembers, Viscount biscuits. They're round circle chocolate ones. You can use those as well. You could use a regular penguin. I think in Australia, they're called Tim Tams, and I'm sure there's an equal equivalent in, in the US. But they're a chocolate biscuit with a chocolate cream filling and a chocolate coating. And these ones are specifically mint. So like I say, we're really upping the mint chocolatiness here today. So that's for our bottom layer. For our middle layer, then, we're going with white chocolate. Um, this was Cadbury's ones, but again, you can use store, you know, Lidl or Aldi. This is just what I had in the cupboard. Um, and I've got 400 grams of this. We're also adding some more butter into it. I told you, don't look at the calories on this. <laughs> we're also adding some more butter in. But this time, I'm not adding the golden syrup or any kind of syrup because I find with the white chocolate, it can leave a slight taste to that layer, and I don't want that to happen today. Um, if I, if you want to, I haven't decided if I want to add it or not yet, so it's not on the ingredients list. You could add a, a teaspoon of, of mint extract, peppermint extract or something to amp the mintiness in there. Uh, and then I, in that middle layer, I'm putting my marshmallows. I have on here mini marshmallows. Couldn't get them. So I've got regular marshmallows, uh, and we're going to be cutting those up instead. And then between all these layers, we're going to add our, our, our after eights as well. So um, I don't know how many I'm going to use. <laughs> Just make sure you've got box. They are on offer. Own bargains. Um, but you, you don't have to use after eights. Again, there's a lot of store-bought ones out there, store-owned brand versions like Thin Mints and things like that that you can use. Uh, but we're going, obviously, with After Eights. Uh, and then our final layer is a final layer of dark chocolate. Can you, can you picture what these layers, two dark chocolate layers and a white layer, looks like? Well, looks like an After Eight if you cut through. That's my hope. That's my hope. Had this idea very late in the day, so this is how I was going to do it. So, like I say, fingers crossed it's going to work. But our top layer then is we're going with dark chocolate. Again, some butter uh, and the golden syrup. And what I also found is um, mint chocolate chip, mint, like uh, chocolate chips that you put in your baking. These um, were. Uh, on Ocado, you can get them on Amazon. These are Gitard um, green mint baking chips. Um, 
that you can use. You don't have to use this. I've also got some sprinkles as well. Uh, but that top layer is just the final layer of chocolate to sandwich everything in. And I'll show you how it all builds up. But if you want to add a little bit of green in there, you can add some mint chocolate. Um, I also found, I found these when I was uh, popped into the shop. These are all, also after eights that you can switch for. These are winter fondants and a London design edition. Um, I have a feeling that they are sealed in the bag, but they are sort of mint chocolate shapes filled with after eight fondant. So you can swap for those as well, whatever you can get on offer, really. That's the best thing. So, so that's our ingredients. Um, Equipment-wise, then, you're just going to need a lot of bowls. I have a stack of bowls here. <laughs> we're going to use most of them because we're going to be doing a lot of melting of chocolate and mixing up. But where you want to assemble this all, then, is into your baking pan. I'm using a square cake pan. Because I want to get those layers, I've gone for a deep pan rather than a brownie tin, which is quite uh, narrow. And for this, normally I'd go for a nine inch because I want to get a decent spread and plenty of slices out of it. Because I want to make sure I've got defined layers, I've gone with an eight inch square version here um, so I can really define those layers. If you want to go for a bigger one and there'd be thinner layers, by all means, go for it. Um, yeah. You're also going to need some baking parchment, uh, and we're going to end up lining that. But this is your key piece of equipment. The rest will just go as we go. So that's it. Um, let's get into this. Uh, where have we gone? Da, da, da. Come on. Hi, Rachel. How are you? I've, my thing stopped working, so I can't switch over. Ah, there we go. I'm good. I'm good. Uh, we had a really lovely weekend uh, with a very lovely friend visiting. Um, we've chilled, we've put the Christmas tree up, we have um, eaten well and all sorts. And my ear is still a bit funny, um, for those of you that have been following along about my ear, but it's getting better. Um, right, so then, let's get started. The first thing we're going to do then is make our bottom layer so we need to you need to make these in sequential order then one is one is having a little bit of a chill out in the fridge while you get the next one ready etc etc so for our first layer then let's make sure i don't get anything mixed up we're going to need a few items not too much and that is our um uh <laughs> We're so looking forward to this. It sounds it, it is really yummy. It's really naughty as well. <laughs> oh yes, and John uh, on the Facebook came to visit, and I managed to save the orange, the chocolate orange Swiss roll for the weekend. Um, and I've got another one that I've taken pictures on, and it, it has now, it, and that has now gone. Uh, but it was really good. <laughs> So then, our bottom layer, let's get started. We are going to melt our chocolate with our butter and our golden syrup all together. So we're going to do this uh, on the hob. You can, again, do this in the microwave, but I want to control this, like I said. So I'm just going to get that water going. I've got a small pan with about an inch of water in there and a bowl that's big enough to sit on the pan, but it's not going to touch the water. Uh, this is the double boiler method that we use quite a bit. Just going to bang the chocolate because this is really therapeutic and I've had one of those days at work today. <laughs> um, so bash your chocolate up. I mean, you, you can just cut it up with a knife or break it into chunks, but... Or that's if you can get into it. <laughs> I can't. Um, but let's get in there. So we've got 300 grams. Now make sure this is the right size. Oh! Uh, you've got all your chocolate. Let's give them a. If you've had one of those days at work, it's really therapeutic, bashing chocolate on the side. Make sure you haven't got a hole in the, in the thing and it's still sealed. Uh, 
Oh, chocolate smells so good. Uh, so that's our chocolate. And then into there, we're going to add our butter. This layer is 300 grams of chocolate, 50 grams of butter, and three tablespoons of golden syrup. Now, uh, some of the recipes that you might see for um, Rocky Road have, um, let me get my tablespoon, sorry folks, have a lot more butter in it uh, for the layer. And I've got one, the crunchy one on the website. Uh, uh, has a lot more butter uh, and golden syrup in it. And that's just because of the nature of that recipe. For this recipe, I don't want to overload each layer with butter and golden syrup. It will just become far too rich, far too uh, um, impalatable, really. It's just too much. So we're going for chocolate and butter, a little bit of butter and a little bit of golden syrup. You can skip the chocolate and the golden syrup all together. Now, I'm going to put this on the boiler so that is there. Uh, and as always, we know I'm just going to keep an eye on that. Um, where was that? Yeah. So you can do it. Some Rocky Roads will call for you not to add anything into it. It's just pure chocolate. But if it's pure chocolate, because we've got all these layers, again, it's too much. The uh, the butter helps just bring sort of something extra to our um, to our chocolate layer. So before we deal with the penguins, uh, we're going to line our tin. Now you want to make sure it is properly lined um, so you can get this out. Otherwise, it will just fixate itself in. So what I'm going to do is. There we go. I'm just going to fold that like that so I know it's well and truly in and into the corners. That's our thing with this. Make sure you get your um, your baking line into the corners. Um, and then because we're going to be pouring things into here and it's chocolate and it gets messy, I just take a couple of... Uh, wooden clothes pegs and uh, pop them on there just to hold it down. Um, and the reason I use wooden ones is then if I want to bake, I need it folded back and baking, then I know that one is nice and safe. It's not plastic. Don't use plastic um, at all. So let me just have, I'm just going to get the oven glove. Now, if you remember with our chocolate, we want to take it to uh, almost melted um, so and then finish it off. If you are doing a recipe with more butter in it, um, then you might find that the recipe calls for you to melt the butter and pour it over the chocolate like we do when we're making a chocolate ganache like we did last week. Uh, but in this instance, because we haven't got enough butter in the mix to do that uh we're doing it that way so uh let's just do our last now i i love rocky road um if you love rocky road and you want a different take on a christmas pudding you'll find the that's not quite right you'll find on the website uh a Rocky Road Christmas pudding, which I adore. And we just make it in a, in a, in a pudding basin, really, um, and line it with some cling film. And it's a great alternative uh, to a traditional Christmas pudding. <laughs> so then I'm just making sure that that's tucked in at the bottom. There we go. Let's have a look at this. I went to do that. I went to get my um, little halogen hob out so I could do this closer to the camera today and then realised I don't have the right sauce pudding <laughs> for it. Uh, now, you can do this in the microwave. You can 
take it and play it in 30 second blasts. Remember when you're heating chocolate in the microwave, it will go really quickly. Uh, the same as when you're doing it on the hob, that's almost done. If you take your chocolate too far, it gets too hot, it will go granular, it will, um, it becomes quite grainy um, and it's not, it, it's not very pleasant at all. And that's not the texture that you want um, here. So I'm just going to take that off and we can talk. So what I do, and we've talked about before, is I take this to a point where it's almost completely melted, uh, give it a stir around and let the residual heat in the melted chocolate finish off doing the melting i'm just going to so that's in a good place i'm going to put it over so i've turned the heat off on here but just while we sort the biscuits out i'm just going to leave that over some warm water if you remember last week when we did the uh the ganache it sort of just uh it's cold again and it just sort of went oh I cooled down now, and we, we had to repeat it. So, so for our chocolate layer, what I'm going to do this evening with this is, I thought normally you break your biscuits up, and I want a really good biscuit layer here, um, and I want it to be quite a nice even layer. So what I'm going to do, and it's about, depends on the size of your tin, uh, it's about seven to nine penguins. Oh, look at them. I'm going to say that thing is they definitely look a lot smaller. Not lengthwise, but thickness-wise since we were kids. Uh, <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay those out here um, in the base of the tin. They're not butting up against each other because uh, I want to get all the chocolate into all those crevices. Um So I'm laying four there, and I'm praying that I've got enough chocolate <laughs> in that bowl uh, for doing it this way. Uh, otherwise, we'll be figuring it out differently. But I'm just laying them in here. Lots of picker picker penguin. Do they still have a joke on them? Why don't penguins like rock music? Oh. Why don't penguins like rock music? Anyone? Do you want the answer? It's definitely a dad joke. Because they only like soul. I mean, if I try and ex if I explain the joke, that, that ruins it, doesn't it? But soul as in S-O-L-E. What's this one? Why did the penguin make a fish pun? I mean, that's what we just had. That's dreadful. Oh, just for the halibut. 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 They're bad. McVit Is it still McVitie's? Yes, McVitie's penguins. They are terrible. <laughs> I'm not going to read anymore. How does a penguin make pancakes? You guys can answer that one. That's that's just as bad. <laughs> anyway, with its clippers, I'm not reading anymore. They're they're too they're they're too bad. <laughs> so uh, I've got one more. How many have you got? I've actually got ten in there. I've put them so, but it's fine. Uh, so uh, get rid of the, the rubbish. Uh, let's have a look. I'm just going to give that a quick blast. Uh, and then what we're going to do now is lay, lay the, pour the melted chocolate over the top. Uh, when you're doing anything with a double boiler, make sure your uh, water is only about an inch in the. If it's too close to the top and it boils up, it will catch the bottom 
of your chocolate and it will just, um, I'm doing this quickly before it decides to, to set. Um, it will catch it and you'll just have a really caught chocolate bottom and it'll make it too hot. And that's again where we'll get that graininess. Um, so, because it's a bit chilly again, our chocolate is wanting to, to set quite quickly. I'm just going to put that to one side. You can use a spoon or a spatula at this point, but push your chocolate all over your biscuits. doesn't matter now if your biscuits start moving, but you want to get a good, get it all into the corners, a good layer of the chocolate on top of the biscuits. I suppose with the them making penguins a bit thinner, <laughs> it means you haven't got so much chocolate in this layer. Uh, apparently last week um, when we were doing this, and uh, you might have seen if you're on Facebook, my my darling of a half popped up. He was in India last week for for work, uh, and uh, they had they had kitchen live on in a bar in uh, Mumbai. Oh, really weird uh and but we had a few uh few new subscribers so no the um when you're doing this don't worry if you see the chocolate coming off the top of the penguins obviously you're putting warm chocolate onto chocolate on the biscuit uh it can uh it's gonna melt it but that's fine it's all chocolate so I'm just going to leave, I'm going to use that bowl again, uh, but um, I'm going to now put this into the fridge. So whilst we do our white chocolate layer, we're going to let this layer chill for a little bit. If we add a layer straight on top of that, it's just going to merge into it. So we do want them to have uh, time to do their own thing, really, and get sorted. So that goes in the fridge. Uh, if you want to do it really quickly, you could put it in the freezer. Um, there is no way I'll get anything in the freezer. Um, I need to find room in the fridge as well. Let's just uh, move a few things around. There we go. Uh, so there we go. That's our first layer. So layer one with our dark chocolate. So layer two then is our white chocolate. So uh, we're gonna take another bowl. You see where this is going? <laughs> we're gonna take another bowl and we're gonna take some white chocolate this time. We've got 400 grams and we're gonna add our marshmallows in as well. So have a bash. I've got chocolate everywhere on my hand. It's just uh, and then we're going to melt the white chocolate. I like this, things like these is, is great. The kids can get involved with it. You can make them as uh, treats or gifts that people share over Christmas as well. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to just pop this water. Let's have a look how much it's still plenty of water in there. Get that going again. And then we're going to add some butter in. This time, because we've got 400 grams of chocolate, we're going in with 75 grams of butter. Um, I'm just going to give that a mix through. And the butter actually does help the chocolate melt because the butter has a lower melting point. And then by the time that's liquid and the heat from the from the butter will do all the chocolate as well. So uh, we're not going to add any mint extract at this point. If you want to add this when it's melted, the reason being is the extracts usually have an element of alcohol base. It's, it's nothing too earthy. Uh, but if you cook it out when you... You hit the chocolate, you're likely to to lose it. So add that afterwards. So this now, this is a different bowl, but it's still going to sit in there, uh, and it's going to heat through. So that's our white chocolate then. So in the meantime, 
Remember, we're not adding golden syrup this time because we don't want it to taint our chocolate. Uh, in the meantime, then, uh, I'm going to cut up marshmallows. So um, I did get lots of bowls out, <laughs> actually. Mm, oops. I'm just wondering if that's melted. I can actually, I'll just cop, chop the marshmallows straight into that and then we land it in here. These are just big marshmallows. You can do, do this with scissors. Don't try and chop it with um, uh, a knife because you'll be here till next Christmas because um, they get sticky. But just give them a chop. You know, they will sort themselves out. Uh, you can try and pull them apart, but it's, yeah. Um, so don't worry. If you can't get mini marshmallows, just go with some some regular ones and chop them up. Uh, I did go through, oh, totally forgot something. Oh my gosh. That's melting. I'm going to get it back out the fridge. I just totally forgot what I was going to do. Sorry, guys. This chocolate is ready for a layer. What I want to do with the after eights is I don't want to chop them up. It was because I was chopping up the marshmallows that I thought. If you chop up after eights, they just disintegrate. So on this chocolate layer, I'm just going to create like a paving slab effect of uh, after eight. <laughs> I knew there was something I forgot to do. <laughs> uh, I just put them in, push them down. Uh Oh, silly sausage, Louise. It's about four across on this. Just turn that down. Uh, so what's that? Oh. So when you cut into it, my plan is that, you know, you've got that layer there. Uh, you've got the white in the middle, but you've also, and we're going to do this on top of the white layer, which is what I completely forgot about. Uh, you've got this layer of after eights. Now, you can, if you want to, chop after eight mints up uh, and put them in. But like I say, I just find they disintegrate a little bit. Um, remember, this is absolutely decadent. Um, so I quite like this idea. Yay! Right. There is a lot. Uh, so that's fine. Um, so that's now going back in the fridge. Let's get that in there. There we go. Uh, let's have a little bit of a check-in on... This is why I wanted to do this on the halogen and then realised I don't have the right saucepans for you. Um... But I'm just going to... Come on, butter. Now, it doesn't matter if your butter's at room temperature or not for this, but the room temperature, it does mean it just melts a little bit quicker. Uh, let's get back to chopping uh, some marshmallows because I know you guys enjoy that. <laughs> can't believe I nearly forgot the after eights out of all of that. That would have been disastrous. I mean, we'd have had a, a minty chocolate, but it, it wouldn't have been an after eight minty rocky road, would it? Uh, and what was I saying before I forgot? Yes, I am the person that went through and picked out all the white marshmallows. And I now have a jar of pink marshmallows. Um, if you can get um, mini marshmallows, they're perfectly fine. I mean, that's what I would normally be doing. Uh, but like I say, this is, um, I couldn't get any, I guess, because everybody's making uh, things for Christmas. Um, let's go there. So you could, if you wanted to, um, use different colored marshmallows. You can use pink ones for a bit of contrast. I'm going, like I said, I'm going for this white effect in the middle. Um, so we've got the two dark chocolate layers. I had toyed about doing a milk chocolate layer, and I was like, oh, let's do two dark chocolate layers, and it look, it'll look like an after eight, in theory. <laughs> uh, so you want about 100 grams of these going 
through. I mean, you can use flumps or whatever marshmallows you can get your hands on. Uh, now, we had a very interesting conversation uh, with some lovely ladies who have been making my crunchy rocky road. Um, and uh, a, uh, a lovely young lady is allergic to gelatin. Now, I'd never heard of gelatin before, allergy before. Now, I have a banana allergy and everybody goes... That's really bizarre. Uh, but it has a gelatin allergy. So obviously, marshmallows are off the list. Um, you can get vegan marshmallows uh, that obviously are made with different types of setting agent. They're usually made with agar agar, which is like a seaweed derivative. Uh, so you can switch to to those instead um and have and have the similar style i mean if you if you're if you're going full-on vegan then obviously you're going to need to change the other ingredients to be uh vegan friendly i think i've probably got enough in there mm, marshmallow um but if you for any reason don't want to use regular marshmallows uh you can switch for like i say vegan and there's quite a few out there now there's one and i can't there's like three from i think and it's got like a little sloth or a little animal on there i'm gonna pinch the last marshmallow for myself um so there's lots of different things out there to switch for i'm just gonna shove a marshmallow in my mouth and get the uh, the white chocolate going now i'm just going to bring that back over here like we just did to stir it through and we can have a look thing you can see a little bit better this time told you before i don't like this uh um trivet I'm just going to turn that off. Remember, when you're dealing with the, uh, like we've got with the, the, the double boiler, be careful because it, you know, you've got hot water there, you've got hot um, chocolate and things. That still needs to uh, heat through a little bit more. So I'm going to pop that back on. There we go. Just needs a few more moments. And then what I'm going to do. Uh... Oh, Barbara, you've answered my question about gelatin free marshmallows. What I'll do is there's a couple of different ones. Now, I know Waitrose do them and I think Tesco's do them. Uh, but when we're finished, I'll link to some that you can do it. There are a couple of different varieties. Um, hold on, let's just, whilst that's just doing this thing, uh, let me uh, have a quick look for you. Gelatin-free marshmallows. See, I hadn't heard of a gelatin allergy before, but a uh, lovely lady, Dandies. It looks like a marshmallow on a cloud. I will share a link. Um, Dandies vegan marshmallows. And also, yeah free from fellows vegan marshmallows and freedom marshmallows from holland and barrett but i know dandies and free from you can get in quite a lot of the supermarkets as well so uh, there you're there are a couple of options there for you barbara but yeah you can you can definitely switch that up uh, and out so <laughs> i've got <laughs> Horrible feeling. I probably uh, no. We're not quite over, not quite overcooked my white chocolate, but almost. So I say you have to be ever so careful with it. Um, I think so. With this, then I'm going to uh, just put this over that again, just so it's got the heat. We're going to grab the. Uh, chilled base out 
which is what's well, not entirely chilled. We're going to pour some white chocolate over. We're going to then scatter the marshmallows and then pour them over the top. You can mix it all together, but I'm trying to get uniform layers here. So this is why I'm doing it this way. Um, so this is quite warm. And it, yeah, it's, it's warm and it's going on chocolate, uh, but it's fine. Actually, where's my thing? Just pop that. That's why I say you need quite a few bowls. <laughs> Give it a quick. So I don't know why I've put that on the trivet. It doesn't need to be on the trivet. Give that a quick squeeze over. Uh, and then I'm just. You could use a caramel or not caramel, then just continue caramel, a caramel or something similar if you wanted to. So now I'm going to add my marshmallows on quite a big chunky marshmallow layer. Don't come for myself. Um. Just finish off my white chocolate. Now, my white chocolate has gone a little bit grainy, so I've got that a little bit too warm. It's fine. It's not going to harm it or anything like that, but it's not quite as smooth as I wanted to. But, hey, these things happen. So I've got my marshmallows in there. I've got a good layer of white chocolate before my marshmallows. I am... Spreading out that remainder stuff, pushing everything into the corners. Uh, and things. Uh, I mean, there's so many. I mean, you've got like vegan lifestyles and stuff, but um, you know, there are so many alternatives now because of different uh, dietary lifestyles and allergies out there. So um, I don't necessarily put uh, substitutions for dietary unless I know that they're good to go um, because th there's a lot of differences and people have a lot of different uh, requirements. Um, and, there's, and, and things like gluten... Uh, free alternatives can be quite a, there's quite a science behind it. Uh, Barbara, I know you've got, I think you've got Katrina's book, The Loopy Whisk Perfection Baked, all about gluten-free baking. If you are or you need to do gluten-free, check her out, The Loopy Whisk. She's, uh, she's amazing. She's also a scientist, so she brings a lot of her chemistry background into her explanations. Um, so uh, there, uh, she's she's great. Um, but uh, my family is part of Ian's family are, are celiac, so I know some gluten-free substitutions that I know work because I've done them for the family. But not everything that I can um, give you those necessarily those swaps and this is why excuse me i've got hiccups it's normally quite a lot of what i get asked on the blog is what what can i swap to make this gluten free um but so i i don't necessarily give you all of those answers so this is my white chocolate layer with my marshmallows i'm now going to pop this back no i'm not you nearly you had to stop me <laughs> i am going to layer do my last uh um layer of after eight minutes um yeah uh i've just seen you're the end of your comment uh barbara i think i answered you can you get them in regular supermarkets yes uh acardo tesco sainsbury's i mean some of them might now already do their own brands um but they are quite uh they are quite easily uh, available now. Um, in terms of the dandies, I know they're an American brand, so you can sometimes, I think, find them in like the world food aisle of Tesco's or, or Sainsbury's or something like that. Um, but you can get them on Amazon, but ingredients on Amazon, you're paying uh, a premium usually. Uh, 
but you, you can get alternatives. I know the freedom and the free from ones are are British based. So I and I have seen them definitely seen them. I need two more after eights. You need a packet of after eights. <laughs> And I need two more. I've got a missing space. So uh, I know one corner is not going to have any after eight minutes. Should we have a look, see what these winter fondant things are like? See if they'll... Oh, I don't think these will fit. I might keep these to the top. Uh, what is this? Said it was a winter London edition. Oh, you probably can't see it, but it's a little... It's a little London eye in after eight format. That's not going to fit in with what I need in that corner. So we're going we're gonna to have a gap, but that's fine. So my chocolate layer, as you see, I've got the gap. It's just two there, but my, cho my white chocolate layer with my after eight going back in the fridge while we do our final layer. Now we're going to do a winter... Um, Rocky Road, and there's a couple on the blog. Gingerbread one, various bits and pieces. The uh, the Rocky Road Christmas pudding. I love to put cherries in. In fact, I love to put cherries in Rocky Road, um, and especially with a white chocolate Rocky Road, it goes really well. Uh, but we're not doing on this because again, I want to maintain our our um, triple layer for our after eight. Look and feel. So last one then, last layer. Whilst that's chilling, we're going to reuse the bowl that I had for the dark chocolate. I'm just going to get rid of some washing up. Uh, so reuse, repurpose, recycle. Not necessarily quite the same in this pain, is it? But um, I am just trying to figure out where I'm going to rest things. Um, but you can use the same bowl as you use for the first layer, for the last layer. Uh, for our dark chocolate. So we're going in once again, give it a smack on the thing uh, with our dark chocolate. And the reason I always, if I'm re if I'm doing dark chocolate and I can reuse the bowl, I, I will do because it's an utter mess when you're washing it. <laughs> so what am I thinking? I'm just thinking of cost here. These bars of chocolate um, in Lidl are 40p. Um, Okay, it's not it's not expensive Fortnum and Masons or whatever chocolate, but hell for, for for baking, for doing something, this stuff, and I think Tesco's do their own, and I know Aldi do their own. You can't go wrong with it. It is sorry, absolutely perfect, especially for something like a rocky road. <laughs> these are the Aldi bars. You can get a similar bar in Aldi. These are the slightly bigger 200 gram bars. But again, I think this was 99p. Um, so, oops, just drop that on the floor. Not on the floor, on the work surface. Let's lean that on there. So, so you know, you, you don't have to spend a fortune with ingredients. Um, there are so many ooh, chocolate on my finger. There are so many options out there to 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 cut things down in terms of budget you know i i use different ingredients depending on what i can get in the supermarket depending what's on offer like i've used white chocolate cadbury's today um because it was on offer um but otherwise i'd and, and i hadn't got any when i'd bought the the chocolate from Lidl and aldi so um you know, swings and roundabouts. Anyway, our last dark chocolate layer, 400 grams of dark chocolate. I've got 75 grams of butter. Again, salted, unsalted, whatever floats your boat this time. Uh, and a couple of teaspoons of the old golden syrup. I mean, I love a golden syrup can. They're great for storing things in. But, oh absolute nightmare if you're trying to bake and get stuff out so let's do that and then this is going back on our heat for our last um last for our into melting uh so that's that let me just 
Uh, give a quick wipe over because I've got chocolate and sticky everywhere. There we go. Oh, I didn't use as many bowls as I thought I was going to use today. Now that middle layer where we have the white chocolate and the um, and the marshmallows, you can mix it all into one in a bowl and then pour it in. But because we're not mixing anything else in there and it's just the marshmallows, I put that layer of white chocolate straight on two hour after eight minutes, put the marshmallows on and then finish it off. That's probably, I'm going to grab a drink, the best way for doing this. And then I made sure that I got a nice even layer with everything and I just leveled it off. Drink. But again... You can mix this all up if you want to. You don't have to do it this way. You can take this recipe and make it just as one rocky road. Um, I mean, if you mix it all up together, it's going to be quite a cacophony of flavors and, and textures. Um, but you can pare it down so it's just one layer. You can break, you can go with just the layer that we're doing at the moment. This is the most dark chocolate, 400 grams of dark chocolate. Add in your biscuits and your um, thing. Um, and I've just seen a comment. Oh, John. I had never looked at that on a golden syrup bottle or a jar or a tin. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to, go and have a look at your golden syrup. But I had never, I knew it was a lime, but I didn't necessarily know what it was. How bizarre. So, um, oh, I can't remember what I'm saying now. Yes, if you want to go with this layer, 400 grams of dark chocolate with the golden syrup and the butter, and then you can put your biscuits in there, you can put your marshmallows in there, and you can chop your after eights up and just have uh, a cacophony of flavors. Uh, just mix it all up in a bowl and then put it as one layer into your Rocky Road. You don't have to do the layers if you don't want to. I wanted to take this a little bit different, and that's where we're at with this. Um, so let's just have a, where's my oven gloves? Uh, let's just have a look. There we go. So that's mixing through and it's melting off really nicely. For this layer, I'm just going to keep this simple. Uh, I'm just going to turn that down a little bit. I'm going to keep it nice and simple because we've got our marshmallow there. We've got our biscuit there. Just want some chocolate now. Um, and But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a little bit of a decoration uh, with some sprinkles. These are just Christmas green, red and white sprinkles. Um, I'm going to sprinkle those over the top uh, and we're going to go, let's have a look at these bacon chips because I got these on the shopping this week. My scissors are covered in marshmallow. Uh, let's get a fresh pair. Just turning that down. Uh, these are guitar, guitar, guitar. Uh, they're American, they're from San Francisco, they are expensive, uh, so they are not within line with what I was talking about, about budget, but you can get mint uh, chips differently, but these are, uh, they're completely free from, they're free from peanuts, they're free from nuts, they're free from tree nuts, from gluten, from all sorts of things, they do have dairy, um, so I quite like them because that hits my, my nut allergy as well perfectly. Um, but they are fabulous um, chocolate chips for cookies and things like that. I've got some butterscotch ones. And then oh, I've just got a whiff of mint. When I saw these uh, on the uh, thing, so they're like little mint chocolate. Ooh! They're like just mint. They're like arrow. Oh. But they're really minty. So you can put these. I'm going to sprinkle a few of these on top with the uh, the sprinkles. Uh, I'm just going to keep going there for a minute. But they're nice. They actually make some really great um, baking, like almost like little puddles for chocolate chip cookies, which are 
fantastic to use, um, and I really enjoy using them. But they are different. They are something that, you know, is a little bit more expensive. Um, let's have a look at our final layer. I have a feeling the camera is going to switch as well in a minute. Um, so I'm going to leave that. I'm going to push the bottom so I don't lose you. Push the button. Uh, and then let's get this. Uh, let's have a look at this. This is our final chocolate layer. Uh, there. Now, you could do this uh, if you wanted to. Rather than just using the chocolate, if you really wanted to add more mint into it, uh, you could add the Terry's Mint Chocolate, not an orange, orange. Have you seen them? I've uh, done a hot chocolate recipe with them. You could use them instead for minty chocolate, but they are a milk chocolate. Um, so it will be a different sort of uh, flavor wise. So this is almost there. Um, nice and you see it all nice and glossy that's just the button that little bit of golden syrup so i'm just going to put that on turn that right down um and grab our rocky road from the fridge now white chocolate will melt yellow don't worry about it it never goes pure white uh, you can you you can get things like whiteners, uh, uh, and they're made with titanium oxide and stuff like that. Uh, I had a, I've, I've had a lady inquire about making things white. Um, don't use it; it's not nice. Um, if you really are looking for a white colour in something, add a little bit, tiny bit of purple. Um, to your uh, to your to your cake batter, to your buttercream, to your chocolate, and it will counteract the white. Don't use the titanium oxide; it's it's not nice stuff. Um, uh, and it like so, ladies or even gents, uh, if you've got a uh, highlighted, coloured, lightened hair like myself, you might be um, advised to use a purple shampoo, and it's that same concept of the purple takes away the brashiness, the yellow nuts of, of that. Uh, so it's that, but yeah. Um, you will find that your white chocolate layer is not pure white. <laughs> it's not pure white. Right, let's grab this, because I think we should be in a really good place. There we go. So... I'm literally going to pour this over the top. Can you imagine if you were just doing this as one layer and this was full of uh, biscuits and all sorts, then it would be quite a... Uh, you don't actually have a huge... You have a lot of chocolate in, but when it's... It's just effectively binding stuff together. It's not... Um, it's it's not like a solid lump of chocolate uh, in there. So let me just move that across. There's my palette knife from before. Just want to make this. Oh, I don't need that anymore because that has come out of the fridge. It's not hot. Uh, give it a, a level off there. I'm glad I've done this in the 8-inch pan rather than the 9-inch there are bees, it. Oh, thanks, Julie, for um, letting me know about uh, that. The bees on the. I don't know, I hadn't actually noticed. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Ah, pair of you, both on cue with the, I love this because I find out new things. Uh, you guys teach me stuff as I maybe teach you stuff. Uh, there we go. Uh, 
Happy days. Do you know what? I'm loath to add anything to this because it's nice and shiny and level. Uh, oh, no. You might find that your chocolate gets into some crevices and, and moves down uh, in amongst that white chocolate. It's fine. It's no problem. We're just building some layers up. Uh, I'm not going to tip this. Too. Should we put some sprinkles on? Uh, I literally am just going to just sprinkle over you know what i'm thinking i'm not going to add the mint chips baking chips chocolate chips now because i have an idea i'm going to well, slice this up and i'm going to decorate the individual slices as well but i'm just going to add some sprinkles there we go I'm not doing this with my hands rather than tipping out the jar. If I tip it out the jar, we'll just end up with a lot. And you can, if you wanted to, you could put another layer of um, after eights or something in there. Uh, but I've just gone with the, the sprinkles. Oh, we've got a, we, I've got a rogue snowflake sprinkle there. How did that get in there? Ooh, cheeky. Right. And this is all ready to go. Uh, you, I'm not going to tip it because it's like obviously tapped. So this now needs to go in the fridge. Let's get rid of that. Oh, that is a bit of a weight, but get those layers. That's all right. So <laughs> got a bit of a mess. Let me just move some of the uh, rubbish out of the way. Uh, there we go. Okay, my penguin bar. Should we have a look at this? I haven't had an after eight for ages. They're like solid chocolate with um, after eight fondant in the middle. Hmm. Right. She says tidying up after herself. Let's have a look, guys. Must that sim? And have a little bit of a recap. I can't wait for that. It's quite deep. But when I cut it, I'm going to cut it into quite small pieces, as small as I can get um, with a hot knife. So well, that needs about a good six hours overnight to chill. If you try and cut it beforehand, you try and lift it out the tin beforehand, it's just going to collapse. But really make sure... It's 110% chilled out. Leave it in the fridge. Come back to it tomorrow. I'll have a look at it tomorrow. Actually, probably won't get cut. Excuse me. Until the weekend. When I'm going to feed my nephews lots of sugar. <laughs> so what have we made? We have made an after eight rocky road that, fingers crossed, is a triple layer. Uh it's going to serve about 16 to 20. It actually might serve a few more, but uh, that's going to be the best way of cutting that into slices. If you try and cut it into too many small slices, it's just going to disintegrate. It's just going to crumble away. Um, it is easy. Like I say, all I've done is melt some chocolate, added some stuff in, melted some chocolate, <laughs> added some stuff in. And you don't even have to melt the chocolate on the hob. You can do it in the microwave. But remember, if you are microwaving your chocolate, 30-second blast. 30 seconds, give it a stir, put it back in because it will go like that in the microwave and it will just um, sort of go really nasty and grainy and that's that's not what we want. Taste-wise, this is total mint chocolate heaven. We've got uh, the mint penguins, with mint chocolate penguins, the after eights, the chocolate. We've got more mint in there, more chocolate. And if you want to, you can add some extra mint with some peppermint extra, which we didn't do today. Um, but you can do. Price-wise, it's really quick to assemble. Obviously, I've been through everything. 
but also it's really easily customized if you want to you can switch it up change it around do whatever you want with it you could swap the after eights out for mint arrow oh think about that a layer of mint arrow and you cut through and you get all the green bubbles Ooh. <laughs> uh, so it's gonna really impress um cons wise is what we're doing at the moment you've got to wait for it to set do not attempt it uh before it is not chilled six hours at least if not overnight ingredients wise then really basic ingredients we're going with chocolate butter a bit of golden syrup and then our add-ins like our penguin biscuits or whatever biscuits you want to use um or uh your after eights or your marshmallows mix it all up and do that there and then we have that bottom layer of dark chocolate our middle layer of white chocolate and our other top layer of dark chocolate so we get sort of a triple layer after eight looking sort of rocky road i guess dark chocolate white dark chocolate maybe remember it's got those the the, the mints in the middle um but again as i uh, as i stress you know we're using a lot of chocolate here we're using after eight mints etc cetera, etc cetera. so you can make really easy cheap substitutions to keep the cost down especially if you want to gift it for christmas and you want to make a lot of it um but yeah oh gosh oh thank oh my god thank you guys i, I sound like sort of oh my uh well, i won't sing for you but um it's either clue no it can't be clue it must be legally blonde uh, the musical has got a song. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! You guys, that's about as much as you get in singing from me. <laughs> um, uh, so I will. I will reply to you guys in a minute. But yeah, you can find recipes. Will be on the blog. I um, will get round to this. It's going to be the weekend. We've got family. It is massive countdown to Christmas. How scary is it? It's like bang, bang, bang. Uh, we're with family on Saturday. Uh, so I'm hoping to get it uh, uh, photographed and uh, written up on Sunday. Fingers crossed. If not, you can find all the recipe here or just give me a ping if you've got any questions and I'll let you know. Um, I think we're almost there. I've got the cranberry shortbread that I'm working on at the moment. It's been a bit of a busy week at work. Um, so next week, ta -da, thank you very much for watching, as always. Truly appreciate it. Uh, I'm going with extra special mince pies. Um, I've been asked quite a few times for different things of mince pies. We've been looking at them. Uh, I was going to do puff pastry ones the other week, but actually we're going to do this extra special. Mm. They're just a little different. We're going to be making a, a mince pie. We're going to make it a deep one. I'm going to fill it with some homemade mince meat that I will share the recipe with you guys for. Uh, we're then going to top it with a crumble and a brandy buttercream and make it all this. Mm, maybe even put some custard in there. So it's like a whole dessert in a bit of mince pie. Uh, but I'll figure it out. I've got various recipes that I make for mince pies. Uh, but my base one is my grandmother's that she made when I was sort of this high. And uh, I smelt her making 250 mince pies for Christmas school fairs and all sorts of stuff like that. So we're going to do mince pies because it's almost Christmas. <laughs> but uh, Rachel, John, Barbara, Julie, thank you so much. I hear you're all going to make it. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, just give me a shout if you've got any questions. In the meantime, thank you always for joining me on a Wednesday evening. I hope you're all safe, you're all well, you're tucked up um, and, and you're warm and uh, everything like that. But thanks very much for watching. Truly appreciate it. And I'll see you all guys soon. Take care. Bye for now.